Dr. Gray. Before we begin, I'd just like to have my teammates stand up. It's very privileged to work with just an exceptional group of people. The Jolly Green Bankers, rise. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we are the Jolly Green Bankers. I'm Cole and this is Tom. We wanted to talk about our topic of the equator principles, uh, assessment of them in South America. We're going to talk about just exactly what are the equator principles, what goes on in the process of adoption and implementation, what some of our findings were, conclusions we drew from our research, and some of the recommendations for the future. Without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to Tom. Thank you very much, Colin. So a year ago, we began this project by taking a very broad look at sustainability in the financial industry in South America. Over the course of the year, we chose to focus on a key, if not the most important aspect of sustainability, and that being the equator principles. Where the equator principles is a benchmark for the financial industry to manage environmental and social risk in financing projects. So what did we do? Well, we selected a key financial institution in each of the four countries we went to visit, and then we also wanted to take a look at the business environment that those financial institutions operate. So we spoke to government officials, academics, as well as other financial professionals. We spoke to Bovespa, the Brazilian Stock Exchange. In terms of our research, where did we focus? Well, we focused on the adoption process, the incentives to adopt, the impact that this has on organizations, and then we also drew some of our own conclusions and recommendations. Now, the history of the equator principle. Back in 2003, several large multinational banks saw a need to develop a standardized set of sustainable business practices that could be applied across all industries and around the world. They took existing World Bank guidelines that are used in state-to-state -state transactions, came up with the equator principles so those could be applied in the, finance, in the private sector. They were revised in 2006. Um, most notably, a reporting requirement was added so that the finan adopting financial institutions would have to report to the equator principal bodies once a year. And then also the scope of the projects was lowered so that the dollar amount was lowered from 50 million to 10 million U.S. under which the project would have to be subject to equator principal guidelines. Interestingly, in 2007, in emerging markets, we have over 70% of project financing being subject to equator principal guidelines, which amounts to over $50 billion U.S. So, what is the adoption process? Well, on the face of it, it's very, very simple. You announce your intent to adopt, you trade some links on your websites, and you pay 3,000 euros once a year. But what we found is it's far more complex than that. That there's a significant amount of training that has to go on among your employees, and as well as your customers. They need to know that this isn't just more paperwork. Uh, you have to retain the services of very specialized and very expensive consultants to guide you through this process. So, why might one organization want to adopt? Well, certainly beginning this a year ago, we thought, well, why wouldn't you? It just sort of seems the right thing to do. Take the environment and take society into consideration. So what we discovered is that mitigating risk for in, your, in terms of your financial bottom line and your reputational bottom line are the most important drivers to adopt your greater principles. It just makes business sense. And interestingly, you're also given preferred access to lines of credit. So specifically, you're given access to a World Bank IFC line of credit specifically for equator principal adoptees. Well, we'd like to begin our dis uh, a little discussion of what we found when we conducted these interviews. And we've got to begin in Brazil with Banco Itaú. And the Brazilian banks worldwide far and above exceed anywhere other anywhere else in the region. It was just e exceptional. Uh, Banco Itaú is by far a leader in this. Last year, they did over $4 billion in project financing that was subject to the equator principles. But it's also important to mention and to understand the environment, the financial environment in which these businesses operate. Brazil has a tremendous culture of pride, responsibility, and protecting and accountability with their natural resources, specifically from the Amazon rainforest. The late 1980s saw some debacles of projects having to do with oil and gas companies, mining companies, lumber companies going into the Amazon. The Amazon Trans-Amazon Highway is a perfect example of this. And in absence of government oversight and government enforcement, banks themselves took it upon themselves to say, we need to do something to protect this. Banco Itaú was itself a leader. In 2001, you can see they developed their own environmental management system. So in 2003, when the Equator Principles were first formed on a global level, it was a perfect fit.